Last time we got the cover off the Tesla battery pack, now it's time to start removing the individual cell modules. So to get the cell modules out of the battery pack, uh, there's three things we got to disconnect. One is the actual power terminals up here, they're under those orange caps. Uh, the other thing is the BMS connector, this black connector that's right here. And then on the other end, we'll show you in a minute, the coolant connections. So anytime cell modules are hooked up in series, there's potentially very high voltage. So we'll just do this uh, one at a time. And if we take a look, for example, at just this here, uh, this is approximately a 24 volt battery pack. So as long as we're dealing with that, that's relatively low voltage. We don't have to worry about getting shocked by that or anything along those lines. Uh, but the connections from here out to some of the other parts, uh, that could be. Um, so, you know, leave everything else covered. You know, don't make it so that there's any possibility of getting a high voltage short here. So this is the BMS connector to the battery pack. Uh, it's black, it's kind of hard to see, but basically it's a right angle connector and then it has a, a locking release on this side. So I'm gonna use a little screwdriver to push that release and at the same time pull it up. So this upper part is just kind of a plastic cover, so don't accidentally pry that up. You got to get a little below that to the top of the, you know, normally you would, could push that in with a finger if you could reach it, but it's got that little hook there. So there's that release. Now on the opposite edge, so towards the center of the pack, we have the electrical connections and the BMS, but on the outside of the pack, we have our coolant connections. And these are kind of these black uh, corrugated plastic hoses. If we look back in there, we can see uh, more of the coolant line kind of connecting everything together. And these sort of tee off from there like this. You can kind of see it's going this direction, comes across here. And then that part wrapped in the Kapton tape there, uh, that's the coolant line. So it's sort of a, a flat tube that wiggles its way through the pack. And this black connector here, um, it's got that yellow bit, and that is a tab that we have to lift or push out. Now this one here right now is kind of sideways, so it's a little hard to get at, um, because normally what you want to do is we're looking at, this is kind of the wrong side of the connector. We, it's better to get under this and pull than to try to push on here. That might work, but it might snap the tab or, or something. Uh, over on this end, uh, we can see that plastic tab. And so with just a little screwdriver, kind of get under there, gently pry, and pop up that connection. Uh, it's hard to see from this angle, but that is considerably raised from what it, is, what it was. There you go. There we can see it. And then once that's up, that tube can get slid off. And the metal part of the hose there is actually kind of relatively long. So the other thing is right now, I can't get my hands in here. There's just uh, no space. So what I'm going to do is lift up on the battery module uh, to get some room and then I can unplug the coolant lines. So looking a little wider at this outside edge, you can see that there's uh, sort of this rail here that this sits down on top of this piece of metal. And this is the support for the whole battery module, one on this side and one on this side. And there's a plastic cover, but under there, that's the cells and they're little tiny fuse wires, so we don't want to be too rough with this. 
you need to pick this whole thing up and get it out of there using these rails. So down on the corner, you might see a little tiny bit of caulk that might need to be uh, cut out with a razor knife or something. And then you need some sort of a pry bar to get kind of get under here and get under here and raise it up, maybe stick a block of wood or something in there um, and then unplug those coolant lines. This one's turned kind of funny. Ah, this is a bad example. Bad example. This would be so much easier without the camera in the way. <laughs> when I'm not filming this, it's not hard uh, trying to do this with uh, two hands and running a camera at the same time is more difficult. Okay. So now with the camera not in the way, I can actually get at the coolant connector here. Just put a screwdriver in this part to pop that tab out. And then it can slide off there. Now the other thing to watch out for is spilled coolant. Since we've got the coolant lines right here, even though we drained the coolant from the pack, there's still gonna be a little in there. So it looks like when I pulled the cell module out, this was kind of down on an angle and dribbled some of the coolant out. So uh, I'll clean that up. Uh, the other thing is that the actual connections here on the module, um, you know, there's going to be a little coolant there. So I'm going to take some little silicon corks and stick them in there. And that should keep the coolant from dripping out. So I don't want to move these around too much because they are not light. It feels like it's like 50 pounds or something like that. Um, I can lay them flat, but that takes up a lot of space. Um, but I can't stand them up on edge because, you know, they're flat like this in the battery pack, but the weight is on this support lip and that gets in the way. Uh, so what I did is I 3D printed a part as sort of a little stand. So it's flat and it's got a little notch in there and the notch just lines up with that lip. So I can put that on there. And I'll use two of these. And then that lets me stand it up. And that gives me a lot more room to work when I can stand them up like that. Next time, I'm going to inspect all the individual modules, and you're not going to believe what I find. Make sure to subscribe and tune in next time so you can find out too. Until then, stay charged up.